then also uh, it is wisdom to have continuous learning. Um, and this entails understanding that technology and its role is constantly changing and you have to identify farm practices, processes, activities where technology, uh, including changes in trends, tools and techniques can be deployed to increase efficiency and effectiveness. So if you are going, if you have that understanding through your increased or continuous learning, then you have to develop the right algorithm, which we call coding, to power those technologies, especially the emerging technologies, to help you um, undertake these practices, processes, or activities uh, where you can use technology. And that's wisdom, continuous learning. Uh, then collaboration and communication is wisdom. Uh, no man is an island. You can't stand alone. So. Uh, we have to appreciate that wisdom in coding is to address a specific problem goes beyond individual skills across different disciplines. Higgy mathematics, computer science, uh, software developers, and you have also to involve the stakeholders or the end users and all of that. So you have to communicate with them. So you cannot just be a coder um, when you are standalone, you have to network uh, with the other, that's wisdom. So once you have understood the knowledge, rather you have got the knowledge, understanding, uh, you have to demonstrate wisdom through these concepts. Uh, ESCO considerations. Uh, you must have intelligent discernment of the potential impact of the code you are going to develop. Uh, especially to the users, privacy, security, society as a whole to inform choices. So when you are thinking about developing an algorithm to solve a problem, you must evaluate um, the impacts that it may have on society and otherwise. Um, then the most important thing of uh, um, wisdom is to solve real life problems. And this is by matching coding knowledge and the understanding which we have so far learned to address the challenges. For example, in agriculture, we have challenges like climate change, which manifests as droughts, floods, heat waves. Uh, there are also other challenges like market volatility. Uh, and there are also problems that farmers face, such as pests, diseases, weeds, soil degradation. For all of these, you can do coding and develop algorithms to solve these problems. And I think that underpins uh, the wisdom we want to talk about today. That is matching the coding knowledge and understanding with the real life challenges and problems. That's the wisdom. And that's where our emphasis today will be. Uh, I've developed this table just uh, saying the same words, uh, but going a little bit back to what we have studied before, knowledge and understanding uh, in the left column, uh, which has uh, the concepts of the programming algorithm, uh, the data analytics and the decision making, uh, then the apps, agricultural apps, and these can be developed to address the challenges on the right and the problems such as droughts, floods, heat waves, market volatility, pests, diseases, weeds, soil degradation. When you develop the algorithm, uh, which runs on the whatever analytics, whether predictive and all of that, which enable you to make decisions, you will improve the performance uh, of your farm. You will increase productivity, and the profitability. By use of technologies powered by this algorithm, uh, you will increase efficiency and effectiveness. So in a way, uh, when you match the knowledge and understanding to the real life problems uh, to increase efficiency and effectiveness, that's the wisdom of coding. Uh, so basically, this is the heart uh, of um, what our lesson three today is. Um, and so where do we find the applications where this wisdom has been applied? 
Uh, it is in crop surveillance, uh, precision farming, uh, data-driven farming projections, which many people call predictive analytics. I don't want to use uh, many of those terminologies which may throw off people, but you want to make future forecasts, so projections of yields are uh, using those algorithms. And then there are activities, especially for the youth who don't want drudgery and um, uh, laborious activities, uh, where we can use technology in the form of automation and robotics. Uh, these are all run by algorithms, so that's where we find applications. Then farm management decision tools, where you have an app um, and you can manage um, your farm. Of course, all the planning, the implementation, the monitoring, and all of that when you are managing on your phone. Um, sometime back, I saw a clip, I think from the West, um, maybe in Europe or in America, where somebody could create uh, an apparent fence and the animals could not cross that. It was not a physical fence, but the app creates kind of electrical current and the animal, when they reach that place, they assume it is a fence, uh, but somebody manages it uh, on an app. So uh, in the next few slides, I provide a little bit of more details on where wisdom has been applied in crop surveillance. This refers to the process of monitoring crop vigor, crop health, detection of pests, diseases, identification of nutrient deficiencies. And this can be uh, by use of uh, artificial uh, intelligence powered drones, satellites capable of capturing high resolution images from the farm. So information may be captured remotely, but then used uh, to monitor and detect uh, issues with the plant health. Uh, that data gathered can be processed using algorithms and useful information that enables early detection, decision making, timely intervention, and optimized resource allocation for efficient and effective farm management. So examples where algorithms can be developed or coding can be done is crop and soil monitoring, insect and plant disease detection. Area surveys and imaging, those are the sources of the data that is processed to be able to make uh, the right decisions. So as you can see, crop surveillance can enable save time and money. Uh, by detection uh, of problems uh, say diseases and the uh, in, uh, precision farming uh, is gaining prominence uh, because it helps to optimize uh, resources. In the past, for example, extension workers would recommend also scientists that you apply 80 kilograms uh, of fertilizer per hectare. But when you go to the field, you will find uh, the top, the shoulder position of the landscape, the back slope, foot slopes, which are heterogeneous. They are different, even their nutrient requirements are different, but they would recommend the application uh, of a single recommendation of fertilizers. That means uh, like one size fits all, which is not true. When you go on the farm, you find differences. So. Uh, precision farming is the one that is looking at optimizing resources, uh, managing them based on the specific context on the ground. And so precision farming, this refers to data-driven practice of using artificial intelligence algorithms, analyze data collected by sensors, e.g. relative humidity, temperature, subflow in the plants, pH, NPK, that's nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, soil moisture in the soil, to provide farmers with precise information and recommendation on irrigation, fertilization, and the pesticide application. Um, and so you have to have 
an algorithm that separates out the different units and then computes through different functions uh, the actual amount of fertilizers, actual amount of water, actual amount of pesticide to apply uh, rather than blanket application. Uh, that means it is more efficient, it's more effective, it increases profitability, it helps save on the resources. Um, so it has many advantages, but that's the power of technology. And when you work and you use your algorithms are very, very well, that's wisdom. So the information generated can support farmers in decision-making to increase yields while minimizing resource wastage. And the examples are in crop management, livestock health, monitoring and management. Here I have sneaked in livestock, but as you realize, uh, since our country is predominantly agriculture, I decided to introduce coding in agriculture, but uh, the same principles apply in every field, whether it is uh, human health, whether it is financial health, all of those um, it's powered by the mathematics, by statistics, uh, the different functions. It's a matter of applying your wisdom to that. So whether it is in crops, whether it is in livestock, whether it is in uh, humanist, coding is the same, only that uh, you have to apply wisdom. Now, automation and robotics. As you know, in the farm operations, there are some operations that uh, require manual work, which are laborious, which cause gradually to people. And um, especially the younger people don't want to handle like the hoe and all of that. They want to use uh, technology. So if we are to get used to begin farming, to get engaged, they must be able to use technology. And so applications in automation of processes uh, and use of robotics in farming uh, is one way of helping in this way. And so uh, just like uh, a parent trains uh, a child the language and then the activities to do washing, uh, bathing, washing, and all of that, in the same way, through coding, uh, we can train uh, the, the machines. That's what we call machine learning. So machine learning is very important in automation and robotics to train them, undertake activities which otherwise humans can do. So automated machinery and robots supported by artificial intelligence can efficiently and effectively perform several agricultural boundary practices, including planting, weeding, spraying, harvesting uh, around the clock, thereby increasing returns on investments. So farm automation, uh, there's a role of coding in controlling automated systems, e.g. automated irrigation systems. So in that case, you put uh, sensors of soil moisture and uh, they are programmed with the right algorithm to capture uh, the data which is transformed um, and understood by maybe a computer. Uh, and then that information can be used to detect if the moisture goes below the threshold, it triggers the irrigation system uh, to go on rather than somebody to go there manually or physically and switch on the irrigation system. This is automated. Uh, in the same way, we have the programmed robotics to perform tasks such as planting, weeding, intelligent spraying, uh, plant health, drones, harvesting, even produce grading and sorting. This is more of post-harvest. So you can see coding be goes beyond production. It goes into industry. It goes everywhere. Agriculture is only, we used it as a stepping stone. Uh, into this area. Um, now, this topic is really predictive analytics, but I don't normally use uh, bombastic terms which scare off people. Uh, so I've called it data-driven farming projections. 
So you may have some investment you want to make and maybe they ask you in the bank that um, if you are used and you need capital that produce a bankable proposal. So you need to compute the expected yields, then the cost per unit yield and all of that, the amount of money and flows, all of those. So you have to make projections. Um, and what that's what we call predictive analytics, and we can develop algorithms to help with that. So accurate predictions of yields, pest outbreaks, optimal harvest times can be made using artificial intelligence algorithms through analyzing historical and real-time data, including the soil rhizosphere, plant growth data, and atmospheric conditions, including, of course, the temperature, the relative humidity, and all of that. Uh, so we use environmental data, like temperature, rate of humidity, soil radiation, which can be analyzed using algorithms to aid the farmers in making informed decisions and optimize their operations. For example, farmers can improve water and nutrient use efficiency, minimize chemical inputs, and reduce greenhouse gas emission. This science is referred to as predictive analytics. Now, applications of coding in terms of farm management tools. As I've mentioned earlier, uh, we can have AI powered apps, agriculture chat bot, bots, uh, you can use virtual assistants and other applications which can even be on the mobile or on the desktop and other cloud-based platforms, which can provide farmers with personalized real-time information uh, that you need to uh, maintain this equipment, uh, also financial analysis, weather forecasts, pest and disease forecasts, advice and management. In essence, the functions of management, uh, planning, budgeting, uh, implementation, mobilization, uh, monitoring and evaluation, all of those can be put uh, in an app. Um, and so um, we find applications of coding in farm management. Uh, so instead of a farm manager uh, going running uh, in crops, in animals, in trees, looking at the soils and everything, one individual, an app can help on that. So this information helps to optimize productivity, reduce costs, and improve farm management. Now, having looked at the broad uh, applications of coding, I want to anchor this lesson today uh, that the wisdom moving from knowledge to understanding is being able to match your knowledge and understanding to real life problem and uh, the case study we are going to use which i'm very familiar with as a soil scientist is soil testing soil testing as you know is very very challenging i developed a soil test kit but still uh, people have to contact me they have to contact the department to buy the soil test kit and then they have to be trained and all of that now, this will help in the next level uh, if we can have learners with whom we can work with through these different stages so that they are automated. We use technology right from the beginning uh, because as you know, uh, soil testing has uh, issues such as uh, identifying the soil units where you are to sample, then taking the soil sample and you have to minimize the samples. They are very costly. In the laboratory in Uganda, we only have two laboratories, one I think in uh, Makerere and then uh, in uh, Kawanda. A few others of private have been coming up, but they cannot even analyze uh, all the parameters. Then once you have the results, that's not enough. You just get a report, uh, but then um, it must be analyzed. That's where analytics comes in, then must make recommendation. So our practice in the past, which is weak, is that we come up maybe with a single fertilizer recommendation for all the samples. But now we are arguing, can we use technology 
especially as we are looking at applications in precision farming so that we make recommendations that are site specific. And uh, may not be point to point, but maybe at least manageable units which are similar in soil properties. So um, the wisdom entails that uh, we have 12 steps and I'm going to go through these ones. The first step is requirement gathering. If we are to solve a problem of maybe nutrient deficiency or low productivity due uh, to poor soil fertility, then we have to determine the requirements uh, regarding a certain specific crop, if it is maize. We must understand the specific requirements of that crop uh, in terms of its pH, what is optimum pH, soil organic carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and texture. That means you look at the end and come back to what you want to analyze. We want to increase yields of maize, uh, but we must identify the requirements that will give us the targeted yield. So the first stage is requirement gathering. And this we captured, these were some of the concepts uh, in understanding of capturing data. Uh, the second stage is database design. Since you know there is big data, uh, it's not only even going to stop with soils, we will go to plants, atmosphere, as you build for farm management up, but you must begin designing uh, the modules, the one for soils. You must design a database, how to store your soil test data and related information. Um, and then number three, this must have a user interface design, which is friendly for capturing the data, managing it, sharing it, and all of that. Uh, for those of you who will come on the practical on the 12th Tuesday, uh, we shall have uh, one which is web-based, but also we shall be accessing it using a mobile phone. The topic I have called uh, mad to mobile phone gaming. Um, so that's where we will be able to see some of these things. Uh, but these are the stages that uh, uh, for such apps, uh, the people go through. This is the wisdom application of uh, knowledge and understanding to solve a real life problem such as soil infertility or low productivity due uh, to soil infertility. Uh, then um, uh, once we have developed the database, its interface, then uh, we have to have a system of sample management. We develop features to manage the samples because like for precision farming, it has the coordinates, uh, the latitude, longitudes, and all of those. And these must have unique identification numbers. They must be able uh, to be tracked, especially if we are using technology, the collection dates, um, because of time variability, we don't want to have generalizations uh, when we don't have uh, the timelines. So it must have the time series. Uh, then the next uh, stage is test parameter selection. Here we provide the future for selecting the specific parameters to be tested for each sample. Earlier we mentioned pH, soil organic carbon, and pK, and all of that. So uh, you kind of develop a future, it may be a table and all of that. The next stage is test result entry. Uh, this enables users to enter test results for each selected parameter, whether it's nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and it has to have uh, a numeric value, uh, could have multiple choice text fields, and all of that. So what we are looking at is wisdom. Through this stage, as you're addressing a specific problem, you have to dig deeper based on your understanding, interpretation, discernment, uh, comprehension, uh, to make decisions so that you develop fields uh, which can capture your data uh, very well. Number seven, data analysis and reporting. This is the topic of analytics or processing data. So you develop tools for analyzing soil test data and generating reports. 
Um, as I mentioned, I led the team that developed a soil test kit. So you can adopt uh, the results from there and see a way how you can capture that into your system. Or you can develop sensors which can be programmed. Uh, that means digital, because the other soil test kit I developed is analog. So it still requires an algorithm to convert that information and transform it in a manner that becomes digital uh, for digital management. So you can see each of these steps is very deep. Uh, it can require even a degree, master's or even PhD, just each of these steps. That's why I said uh, developing an algorithm which can help solve a real life problem may require collaboration, networking, and communication. You can see the different dimensions even right here. There are so many options that you can take. Either use an existing analog um, test kit, or you use the results from the laboratory, or you run a sales map, digital sales map, then you may have to adjust those. So there are different ways uh, of uh, developing your code, depending on your wisdom. Uh, security and access control, as you know, uh, if you don't plan for this, people may uh, enter your codes and they destroy everything. So um, all of your investment may be wasted. So you must put in place security measures to ensure protection of sensitive soil testing data, authentication, authorization mechanism, control access. Um, you may even think about regular backups. Number 10, integration and scalability. As you know, uh, like soil testing is only one very critical component of maybe uh, determining what crops grow where and what fertilizers to apply. But then it has to be integrated to uh, crop data management and all of those. So you have to identify any integration requirements with the external systems, devices, laboratory equipment. Uh, you must look at data import export capabilities, which allow future expansion uh, of the app. So this may be just a modular algorithms for soil testing, but it has to be linked to crop data, climate data, and all of those dimensions. Uh, step 11, testing and quality assurance. So uh, for your code, you must do quality assurance to ensure functionality performance is reliable. You must validate it so that it doesn't uh, produce results that are not meaningful to uh, the end users. Uh, then, of course, deployment and training. So once you have developed it, you must have good documentation for the users, how the app can be used and all of that. And uh, you may do training just like we've been using, doing for the soil test kit, even for your app. You may do training or you may develop uh, a manual which may accompany and may also have uh, the component of help. Um, now, this has been a lot of talk of the steps, but I've tried to summarize this, uh, this, uh, these steps um, into this pictorial to show you step-by-step -step algorithm for soil testing. So you have a challenge of identifying uh, the soil sampling unit, as I said, uh, on the landscape, the soil is heterogeneous. It's not uniform. It is complex. Uh, you have different slopes, uh, top of the hill, shoulder, back slope, top slope. Uh, the soil is very, um, in terms of uh, their qualities and the support for, some can support grasses, others trees, uh, shrubs, and all of those. So you have to develop an algorithm to optimize the number of sampling units so that you minimize the cost. That's an algorithm itself modular. Um, so you have to look for the requirements and go through all those 12 steps we have been doing through uh, to make sure that this soil testing is done. There is soil sampling and labeling. You remember we're looking at selecting the futures, whether using 
at the drop down menu or checklist uh, of all those parameters. The soil has to be dried. Now in drying, you may use automation or robots to help drying and all of those. So you have to develop an algorithm of the threshold for the oven or whatever means you are going to use. Uh, then the soil analysis here, this is more of the analog. Uh, I just put that one to remind me of history, but we may want to go digital so that you develop an algorithm for the sensors so that everything is digital. Uh, then there must be analytics, data analytics uh, to interpret the results. Um, is this soil uh, suitable for maize, for beans? Uh, what recommendations do we do? What phosphate fertilizers do we apply? How much? Um, what quantities? What rates? When? And all of those, you must be able to come up with those interpretations. Then you make recommendations uh, for the farmers. Some of the questions that uh, uh, can be answered by wisdom of coding is, what are the computer applications in agricultural practice? Are there computer applications for identifying soil sampling units, uh, testing the uh -huh. soil, making recommendations? What is an example of artificial intelligence in agriculture? Uh, how can programming help in agriculture? What computer controlled devices in agriculture? Can I use uh, a mobile phone to manage my farm? All those questions, uh, that's all what I call wisdom uh, of coding in our lesson. And so really that marks at the end of wisdom uh, of coding and the first level of coding, I've showed you the kind of steps, but each one is more detailed. So uh, tomorrow um, we shall be looking at empowerment, meaning now you must get the skills, knowledge uh, of those techniques to begin applying them over those 12 steps. So that will be uh, the topic for tomorrow, empowerment. Then from there, you have the capacity to develop those codes, those algorithms. And then from there, we move into the last lesson. It will be capability that you are capable of developing your algorithm or your app. Uh, and then we go into innovations and have our practical. So I want to acknowledge the Commonwealth of Learning, Government of Uganda, Street Body of National Council of Higher Education, Local Government of Wakiso District, uh, my board of directors, Light Open and Blended University, members of Lobby University Council, members of Truth Bible Church, Mr. Ronald Dongwa and Mr. Stephen Kaziwa. I beg to submit. Uh, let me check if there are some questions in the chat and uh, please put up your hands if you have some questions. I hope you have, uh, you have been um, uh, listening or we have been communicating. As you know, earlier we had challenges with technology. I think there is no question there. Do we have any hands, any questions? My teacher has told me if there are no questions, it means the students or the learners have understood everything or they have not understood anything. Please feel free. We are family. We are learning together. And as you realize, this is an important topic in everything we do. Um, actually, the Bible is uh, what God has written for us as uh, the code or the algorithms for our life. So. Uh, for us, uh, as uh, uh, children of God, we also now have to write algorithms for our mobile phones, for our computers. That's the way it is simple. So we need to open up and look at this as a simple task uh, that God has demonstrated by writing the Bible. So we must also write uh, the algorithms for our technologies. We can't escape that.
Uh, thank you, Professor, for your presentation. This is Basilo Guang. Yeah. Um, sorry, it's my first time to attend this other commitment. I missed the first two. I hope sorry, and can... they build on one another. From knowledge, you go to understanding. Once you do apply the two, you get wisdom. Sorry. True. I hope you and, can get the materials. That is one reason why I'm... Um, I put up, uh, I mean, I'm asking whether it can be shared so that at least he can do some reading or do it Review. retrospectively. Thank you. Okay, they were shared in, are you registered on the Google class? Basil? Yes, sir. Um, oh, Google class by the one of Dungu. Um, we share it. Um, I think let me see if I can copy for you the link here. But we share it that uh, this Google class we shared it. Let me see okay. if I can uh, share it. I will be grateful. Thank you. Bashir, can you see the link in the chat? Yes. That's where we are posting uh, all the materials. You have access to those. OK, thank you very much. You're welcome. Then the other question is, I see like uh, this process of coding, and uh, as I've just uh, gotten it from the halfway, let me say so. When can somebody take uh, start the process and um, can somebody be as an individual to start the process or there are some protocols that you need to first fulfill before you start the process of coding? Thank you. It's an interesting question because um, when you go back to the lessons before, uh, you will find that everything that we do actually when we write like our program for the day, the timetable, that's a way of uh, in the process of coding. Like the step we have been looking today at soil testing where we say identification of the soil sampling units, taking the sample, drying them, testing and all of those. Those steps are the ones we take if you are going to base you are going to prepare breakfast. So you are already coding. Coding then you begin when you write them down that at this time I'll do this, at this time I'll be doing this and this. So we do it uh, unconsciously all the time. Uh, but now the one we are looking at for, maybe you are looking at is the formal to address your big life challenge. Um, I don't know what your field is, whether it is in health, whether you want to develop an algorithm to interpret uh, X-ray images, uh, maybe with the lungs to determine if there is damage and you have to develop a big data, that kind of formal process or like the soil testing we are looking at. So uh, from the point of getting knowledge, uh, into understanding you are already in a way coding unconscious or even you do it even before but here we are trying to put better understanding that everything we do uh, we are actually implementing a code um, like I mentioned in Christianity we implement the code of the Bible that's what God has written for us so we also do it maybe when you are going to drive the vehicle you put fuel and everything Although sometimes it's not written, uh, you are still coding. So uh, the one you are talking about is maybe formal. You want to get a degree in coding, whether in health, in agriculture, and all of that. And that's the one for which we are setting uh, the background. So that once you have this appreciation, 
this understanding, then you are already you can be taking off. So by the time we reach uh, Tuesday next week, um, you must be already identifying which area. Like you saw 12 steps, almost each step requires an algorithm. It requires coding. So you can't even do everything. For example, like me, I can't do an app on farm management because there is maize, beans, soya, everything and all of that. You have to get all those uh, people to collaborate, but you can use their data and all of those. That's why many people have issues with the data and they try to, they are trying to say, well, is it social just to have the data, access to data everywhere because it is important for, I hope I have helped. Are we communicating? Yes, Prof. Thank you very much for enlightening me along that line. And uh, yeah, and if I've not deep... helped, then you can still ask uh, another question in another form. Then I can still be able to answer it, and it helps to you to appreciate, especially if you are not around for knowledge and understanding. They are very different. Uh, it's only when you have uh, those ones, and then you build on. Like now, wisdom is more of decision making. Once you have. Uh, uh, walked in the waters, you know the knowledge and you have basic understanding. Okay, thank you very much, Prof. You're welcome. Any other question? We still have three minutes. We want to close at three. This recording will be shared too for tonight's, this afternoon session. Uh, Stephen will be sharing it, I think, tonight. He has a class the whole day, and so um, he will be doing it, uh, I think, later in the evening. But before we have the next class tomorrow, you will have it. OK, noted. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other? Are there, I think, Moi, Moi, you have been around since the first day. Are there those who have been around since the first one? Do you see a difference and do you appreciate the difference and the journey we are taking? So, as I mentioned, we are going to build on from knowledge to understanding. And once you combine the two and you match it with uh, in terms of addressing real life challenges and problems, that's wisdom. But in that wisdom, since you already have the understanding, you are able to break down the steps of what problem you are going to solve. Uh, so tomorrow we begin looking at empowerment uh, to begin now moving like from those steps, actualizing them, implementing them, until you develop the capacity um, to be able to develop your algorithm and then uh, the capability to be able to put it uh, on the market to the end users. Um, and then of course you can do innovations and all of that. So that's the journey uh, we are taking. Okay, uh, if there are no more questions, no hands, um, I can see um, some appreciation, good explanations. I hope uh, we can build on that more. So I would like to end here, but thank you um, that uh, for some of you who have not uh, in attending the lessons before, please look up the material. I've shared uh, the link of the Google class. Thank you very much. God bless you.